Hello, hello, welcome back. Hola, hola. Can you hear? Hola. Me? Are you back? Ya regresaron? Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. So let me let me share with you my screen. Okay. In order to Okay. So let me uh, show you again the slides in order that you can tell me uh, per group uh, which ones do, uh, did you identify. Okay. So who would like to start? ¿A quién le gustaría comenzar? Nosotros. Okay, adelante Lorena. <laughs> um, just give me one second. Okay, don't worry. Okay. We identify, we can, we, we can say the words that we identify, yes, you right? Can start by saying And that. then a sentence. Yes, please. Okay. Armchair, grasshopper, mm -hmm. motorboat, okay. fish tank, okay. fireman, rainbow, briefcase, sunglasses, eggplant. Excellent. And from the last one, my, my classmate um, will tell you the, the sentences. Okay, please go ahead. Carlita y Adrián. Carlita and Adrián. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? Yeah, orange. Um, um. Perdón, las oraciones vamos a decir, ¿verdad? Yes, yes, you divide three and two, or depending okay. how you divide them. Este, um, the coffee station. I like this yeah. coffee station because of the atmosphere. Okay. Um, I can see the rainbow. Uh -huh. After the rain. Excellent. Okay, in this case, uh -huh. um, the fireman, the fireman job is a real hero. Okay. In the next case, uh, my sister work in X-ray department. Excellent. Thank you. Very good job, team. Congrats. You were able to find many, many uh, words and then to elaborate uh, four sentences. Thank you very much. Okay, next team, please. Nosotros agar agarramos ahí unas oraciones, por, ex por ejemplo, I, I wanna to drink uh, mm -hmm. orange juice. Juice, orange juice. Juice, juice, sorry, okay. juice. Okay. Eh, luego están otras ahí que tiene mis compañeros. Okay, please go ahead, adelante. Um, I, I am going to go coffee station. To the coffee station. Coffee. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wear, sorry? Yes, please go ahead. I wear sunglasses. I wear sunglasses. Hola? No, no, no. I, I wear sunglasses in sunny day. Okay, in sunny days. And the fire, the fireman is in the fire station. Okay. okay, were you able to find some extra words? ¿Pudieron encontrar algunas palabras adicionales a las que han utilizado en las oraciones? Eh, yes. Okay, can you mention some of them, please? Uh, for example, uh, uh, rainbow, um, fireman, uh, armchair, chair uh, mm -hmm. in the next, uh, okay, from the next, x rays, mm -hmm. and 
orange juice, mm -hmm. and traffic light, mm -hmm. and, and the other okay. boards. Excellent. Thank you very much, my dears. You did a, an effort of finding extra words and also uh, elaborating sentences. Thank you very much uh, for your effort. Um, also, great, great job. Okay, let me continue showing the presentation where I can share with you more nouns. So, um, in here, I have apple tree, bathroom, birds of prey, right? It's a three words, look. Bus stop, catfish, court, uh, courthouse, database, daughter in law. Es como mi, mi, mi nuera, ¿verdad? Daughter in law. Yeah, three. And hyphen. Downstairs, eggplant, able, father, father in law. Mi suegro, father in law. Fire drill, housekeeper, ladybug, lawn mover, uh, mother in law. Okay, necktie, seafood, skydiving, son-in-law, textbook, thunderstorm, toothbrush, training room, upstairs. Okay, so those are compound nouns conformed by two or three words. Some of them uh, separated uh, by hyph hyphens or some of them separated by a space or some of them just join words. Okay, something important that maybe you can ask about the plural forms of compound nouns. In general, we make the plural of a compound noun by adding S to the base word, the most significant word. Look at this example. A tennis shoe. So when you're going to talk about more than one pair of tennis shoes, you say three tennis shoes, right? In this case, shoes is the most important word. Lo que nos dice es que en general conformamos el plural de un nombre compuesto utilizando la letra S en la palabra base o la que es más importante. ¿verdad? En este caso estamos hablando de shoes, zapatos. ¿De qué tipo? Tennis. Okay, entonces, shoes. Shoe is the word that we add the letter S to make the plural. One assistant headmaster. In here, five assistant have masters, right? This, this is the most important word here. The surgeon major, some surgeons major. In, in this case, the most important word uh, is surgeons. A mother-in-law, two mothers-in-law. In this case, the most important word is mothers. An assistant secretary of state, three assistant secretaries of states. So the most important word is secretaries here. My, to my toothbrush, okay, my toothbrush. So our toothbrushes, because toothbrush is the most important word here. A woman doctor, four women doctors. Look, in this case, we converted in order to have consonants. En este caso, voy a decirlo en español, para que haya um, coherencia, ¿verdad? En la oración tuvimos que también cambiar el plural, ¿verdad? Este es un plural especial. Woman, only one. Women, more than one. Women is the plural word. word. So, doctors. But in this case, both are important. A doctor of philanthropy. Two doctors of philanthropy. In this case, the most important word is doctor. A passerby, a passerby. Okay, este es un transeúnte, ¿verdad? Alguien que iba pasando. Two passers by. En este caso, ¿verdad? Lo que hacemos es el número, ¿verdad? Two. Two passers by. And the word is not um, modified with any letter S. Okay, again, this is an extra feedback about what I already explained. Uh, the verb plus the preposition, for example, take out. Example of sentence, we can take, we can have take out for dinner. Noun plus prepositional phrase, passerby. A passerby stop to help us carry the boxes. Preposition plus noun, bystander. A bystander ended up being the main witness. Noun plus adjectives. 
For example, Snow White. Her dress was Snow White. Okay, la Blanca Nieve, ¿verdad? Regarding the pronunciation, generally speaking, when, the, when we pronounce compound nouns, uh, one tends to stress the first word. This pronunciation is key in helping the listener understand what one is talking about. For example, if you say that the words greenhouse with equal emphasis on, on both of the words, this emphasizes a house painted green. If you emphasize or stress the word green, the listener knows you are talking about a special building used to grow plants. Okay, vamos a, a decir esto en español para que quede un poco más claro. En cuanto a la pronunciación, generalmente hablando, cuando pronunciamos nombres compuestos, uno tiende a, estres, a, a darle más fuerza, ¿verdad? O estresar la primera palabra. Diríamos a acentuar en español. Esta pronunciación es la clave para ayudar al oyente a comprender de qué estamos hablando. Por ejemplo, si usted dice la palabra greenhouse, con igual énfasis en las dos palabras, eh, Estamos hablando una casa pintada de verde. Pero si usted hace mayor énfasis en la palabra green, greenhouse, eh, the listener knows, el, el oyente comprende que usted está hablando de un invernadero, que es un lugar especial para que crezcan las plantas. So, depending on the word that is most important, you also stress that word. De igual manera, ¿verdad? De acuerdo a lo que usted, de lo que usted esté hablando, eh, esa frase tiene que ser como un poco eh, stressed, eh, pronunciada con mayor énfasis. Ok, do you have questions so far? ¿Tenemos preguntas hasta acá del tema? I know that it's a wide topic, but you can continue learning and practicing and you will continue finding more compound words. Ok, podemos seguir profundizando después, ¿verdad? Eh, porque ese tema es bastante amplio, pero digamos que con esto tenemos las bases. Ok, so I'm going to start sharing my next presentation. Ok, uh, let me just introduce this topic. Solo vamos a introducir este tema porque eh, pues ya el tiempo no nos va a dar quizás para hacer todas las prácticas. Vamos a ver. The next, next topic is asking and giving directions. Asking, preguntando o pidiendo, and giving, dando, proveyendo, ¿verdad? Directions, direcciones. En este caso, physical um, addresses or directions to get to a place. Okay? So, when we are new in a place that we don't know, we normally use these expressions. Remember that in here we are going to use uh, some prepositions of place that we already studied in our previous topic. Para trabajar este tema vamos a hacer uso de algunas preposiciones del lugar que ya habíamos estudiado en un tema previo, ¿verdad? So, the questions, for example, is how do I get to the library? Do I get? ¿Cómo llego? En este caso, el verbo get, let me explain that this, a, this is a very wide verb that you can combine uh, in different, with different words and in different contexts and can have different meanings. Eh, comencemos por decir que el verbo get es un verbo bastante versátil que combinado eh, con diferentes frases y en diferentes contextos puede significar varias cosas. Pero en este caso, eh, cuando lo usamos para pedir direcciones, eh, how do I get to, I get to es cómo llego a, ¿verdad? Llegar a un lugar que yo no conozco. How do I get to the library? So basically I'm asking you guidance. Básicamente le estoy pidiendo que me guíe cómo llegar al lugar. That you can explain, that you can give me directions. So you can say go up stairs and then you will find the library on the second floor. Ok. Suba la grada y va a encontrar la librería en el siguiente nivel, en el segundo nivel. Ok. Where is the nearest post office? Ok. Where is the nearest post office? It's on the corner. Can you tell the way to the big hotel? Go straight ahead and then cross and cross to the right and then continue walking until you pass the supermarket and then you will find the big hotel. Are we on the right road for San Miguel? 
Eso es como confirming, right? Estamos en el camino correcto for a different, for a different city, a place or city, por un lugar específico, ¿verdad? Can you show me on the map, please? I'm looking for this address. How do I find? Excuse me, how can I go to? Do you have a map? Are you from around here? Where is? Which is the best way to? Pardon me. Este pardon me es similar to excuse me, ¿verdad? Este pardon se utiliza más en el British English que en el American English. Pardon me. I'm lost. How do I get to the hospital? Okay. Could you direct me to the bank? May I ask for some help? I need to get to um, the supermarket or to the nearest uh, pharmacy or to the nearest, I don't know, any place. Is it far? Está lejos? Okay, some of the directions that we can provide can say go up, it's on the corner, go straight ahead, siga recto, that goes straight ahead, cross, go along, turn left, into street, turn right, go down, it's on the middle of the block. You will pass a supermarket on your left. Take this road. Turn right and, and, and turn right at the crossroads. Crossroads, cruce de camino, ¿verdad? It's on your left or it's on your right. Take the first road on your right. Take the second road on your left or on the left. It's about 100 meters from here. So what about this, the, the signs? Uh, turn left, turn right, go straight ahead, go past. O sea, pase por, ¿verdad? Cross, crucese, go straight ahead, continúe recto, turn right, eh, cruce a la eh, derecha, turn left, cruce a la izquierda. At the corner of, en la esquina de, next to, a la par de, ¿verdad? Opposite, prepositions of place. In between, right? In medio de, ¿verdad? Okay. Now is your turn to practice, right? Uh, we have here a map. We have a high school. We have a library. We have a barber shop. We have a sports center. We have a bar, a coffee. We have a drugstore. We have the bank. We have a shopping center, the First Avenue, right? Uh, so we can say that the grocery store, if I ask you, where is the grocery store? Alguien me puede ubicar? Where is the grocery store? It is at First Avenue. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. And you can add it is on First Avenue on. Uh, or on the corner or First Avenue on. and Pine Street, right? On the corner, porque okay. está justo en la esquina, ¿verdad? On the corner or First Avenue and Pine Street. It is in front of shopping center. Yes, it's in front of the oh. shopping center, right? Very oh. good. Or across the high school, right? Across, al cruzar, ¿verdad? Across the high school, right? Okay, now let me ask you, uh, where do I find the hospital? It's on, the pine, it's on the Pine Street between the library and the barber shop. Excellent, excellent. Between the library and the barber shop on Pine Street. Excellent, very good. So now let me ask you, where is the drugstore? How can I get to the drugstore? Let's imagine, let's imagine this. I'm in the grocery store and I want to, and I want to go to the drugstore and I'm new in the city so I don't know what road to take? Go up in Pine Street mm -hmm. for a um, block. One block. And it is on your right. Okay. On the right. Excellent, very good. Or you can say, uh, cross First Avenue and go straight Past the shopping center and the drugstore is next to the shopping center. Okay? 
The drugstore is on the corner of Pine Street and Second Avenue. Okay, that's another way to say, but you say a, a, a right way. Usted dijo una forma correcta y hay otra forma, ¿verdad? Que es diciéndole así. Cruces a la primera avenida, eh, pase por el shopping, siga recto, pase por el shopping center uh -huh. y luego decir, ¿verdad? Que el drugstore está on the corner en la esquina de Pine Street y Second Avenue. Ok. O or, or, or puedo decir, Ajá. Walk, o, o sea, duda, eh, pregunto, ¿verdad? Sí, 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 sí. Si se puede decir, walk two blocks on the corner. Yes, eh, depending on where you are, es correcto. Por ejemplo, si yo hubiera estado... Eh, Ajá, sí, sí, si hubiera sí, estado, ah, si hubiera ahí, estado ahí, al, al, al inicio. Ajá, al inicio, digamos, aquí está cortada la imagen, pero es correcto. Ajá. Si yo hubiera estado al inicio de esta imagen, es correcto, como usted dice. Eh, to uh, mm -hmm. walk two blocks, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. eh, and then you will find the drugstore uh, between Pine right. Street and Second Avenue, on the corner of Pine Street and Second Avenue. Okay. Yes, Thank you. that's right. Okay, let's imagine that now I'm in a sports center and I want to go to the grocery store. Okay? Grocery. So how it should be? Cross Pine, Pine Street. Uh huh. Then you cross, go down, mm -hmm. cross Second Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, walk for a one block, and then you cross the First Avenue. You can see the grocery store at the corner of Pine Street and First Avenue. Okay, excellent. That's good. Or maybe you can say, eh, cross Second Avenue, lo vamos a mandar por el otro lado, ¿verdad? Eh, walk one block, eh, you, you will pass the barbershop, the hospital, and the library, then cross the First It's Avenue, uh -huh. okay. and on the corner, eh, on the high school of the corner, cross Pine Street, and The grocery store is in front of the high school. It's across, excuse me, across high school. Esa es como la otra forma, ¿verdad? Del otro lado, ¿sí? What do you mean in cross o across? Eh, across es al cruzar. Al cruce. Oh, ok. Uh -huh. al, cru al cruce Ajá. o al cruzar. Al cruce o al cruzar. Across. Uh -huh. Ok. Excellent. Thank you. Ok, now, another expression. Uh, when you ask for directions, you can say, excuse me, do you know, or can you, could you tell me, la forma más formal es, could you tell me, ¿verdad? Cuando usted no conoce a alguien, utiliza could. Recuerde que en could la L no suena. Could you tell me the way to the hospital, please? How can I get to the bank, please? Where uh, the supermarket is, okay? Eh, important, ¿verdad? Lo que les digo, can plus could plus the verb, verb phrase, how can I get to? ¿Por qué se llama verb phrase? Porque I get to, get to, ¿verdad? Lleva dos, dos palabras, get to. Do you know where the shopping center is? Okay. When you're not from the place, you can say, I'm sorry, I've no idea. Este I es I have no idea. No tengo idea, ¿verdad? Disculpe, no, no sé, no tengo idea. Or I'm afraid I don't know. Me temo que no lo sé. ¿Ok? If you're, if you're unable to give directions. Si usted no conoce o no sabe cómo explicar, ¿verdad? Puede decir de esa manera. Ok, I have here another, eh, another chart that explains, for example, it says complete the dialogue below. Hi, Annie. I'm in the library now. Where can I find, verdad? Or can I get to? Aquí hay varios verbos que podemos utilizar. Where can I find? Donde puedo encontrar? Or where can I eh, eh, En este caso no decimos where can I, sino que decimos how can I get to? ¿Verdad? En lugar de where can I, digo how can I get to the police station? Y Annie says it's ¿Cómo diría Ani? It's. ¿Dónde está la police station here? It's near of the bank. Or next to the bank. Okay. Or between the bank and the store. 
On Main Street, right? On Main Street. Excellent. Very good. Abby says, oh, I see. Oh, I see. How about the restaurant? Como diría Annie? It's? It is next to our school. Okay. On Central Avenue. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And Abby says, the one that is in? The one that is in... Estamos hablando del restaurant, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. That is, that is, uh -huh. en este caso sería, that is on the corner. Ahí hay una in, pero está malo porque es on, perdón. Is on, sería, is on the corner of 2nd Street and Central uh -huh. Avenue, right? ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Ese in está malo, es un on, on the corner, en la esquina, ¿verdad? Of 2nd Street and Central Avenue Street. Ahí me disculpo por el error de dedo. Yes, that one. Sí, ese, ¿verdad? Ok, thank you. I'll see you on the train station. ¿Dónde está el train station? In front of our school. At 5 o'clock. Excellent. In front. It's in front, ¿verdad? In front también aplica, ¿verdad? In front of our school at 5 o'clock. O puede decir crossing or five across, or, or across ¿verdad? or school at five o'clock. Excellent, thank you. So let me advance just, a, advance just a little bit. Okay, this is these are the conversations, so I'm going to stop here because of the time. It's over, but tomorrow we are going to continue, okay? And I would like to ask you if you have doubts about this. Tenemos dudas acerca. Yo sé que es un tema bastante amplio también. Um, no nos vamos a aprender de la noche a la mañana todas las expresiones, but you have them there. Ahí las tiene. If you want to take a picture, si les quieren tomar una imagen. And remember that eh, for this case, you use a lot of prepositions regarding to the place you are located and the place you want to find. Okay? El arte de dar direcciones consiste en utilizar adecuadamente las preposiciones, como ya vimos, y ubicar dónde está la persona que se quiere mover y dónde está el lugar que quiere encontrar. Esos son como mm. lo, los dos puntos principales para, pre, para saber es where is the person who wants to find the place and where is the place the person is looking for. Okay? And then you try to provide the best um, guidance, recommendation or way to arrive to the place. Okay, teacher, do you have um, any example or any website in which we can practice, for example, the nouns and the comp compost nouns? Uh, okay, uh, first of all, I want to recommend you the platform, okay? That's the best uh, or the most important tool we have. But um, if you want to go deeper, you can look it up on, on the Google uh, uh, Finder. That why I'm telling you this. Because in that way you will find different places. There are some places where you can find, for example, more vocabulary or other places where you can find more listening exercises or other places that you can, that you can find more grammar. So that's why it's a little bit difficult for me to recommend you one because it will okay. depend on your needs. Uh, what you should do is, for example, if you want to know more about, uh, for example, adjectives, you look for the word adjective plus the competency that you want to strengthen. For example, uh, adjective exercises of list, uh, listening adjective exercises. If your purpose is to improve your listening, you have to write in your search the word listen listening okay but if you say no okay. my listening is okay what i need is like grammar okay so you write grammar uh, in use for adjectives for example and you will find a lot of places where you can go and uh, but if you want to uh, 
perform better in grammar. So it depends. Remember that for learning English, you have four, you need to improve four skills. Listening, speaking, writing, and reading. Grammar. Oh, right. Yeah, grammar is included in, in writing and, and reading, okay? If you want to have a good grammar, you need to read a lot of books and materials in English because okay. in that way you will find the best way to conform structures and also um, you will get more vocabulary, okay? Uh, so grammar is implicit for writing and uh, reading. Okay. But uh, if you want to, to, to uh, improve your listening, that is with music, videos, or um, sometimes a podcast, okay? So it will depend on your need, okay? But okay. keep in mind the, the competence you want to, uh, to improve, okay? Todo depende de la competencia que usted quiera mejorar, ¿verdad? Okay. Okay, uh, if you don't have more questions right now, I'm going to stop here. Yes, I, 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 I yes. have a question, teacher. Adelante. Uh, we need... We need to finish the the section the section three on Friday or or how weekend too. Uh, you have the weekend, but no more than the weekend. By Monday, by next Monday, all of us need to be ready to start the section number four. Okay, because in that way we will work along together, and I can guide you. It doesn't mean that I cannot help you. But what I want you to avoid is to be at the end of the module with a lot of work to do because this is going to stress you, okay? So that's why I'm looking the, the best way that you can go and quietly with no stress advance in a platform, okay? Eh, la invitación hey. es a que para el domingo más tardar usted haya completado el examen de medio periodo, ¿verdad? Para que para el lunes todos estemos en la misma página iniciando en... Eh, el capítulo 4, la sección 4, sin carga, ¿verdad? Que vengamos hablando de las otras secciones porque si no se nos unen y al final eh, puede ser estresante para ustedes el estar completando cosas pendientes de secciones pasadas y tener enfrente la sección 4 y la sección 5 y el medio periodo, el examen final, ¿verdad? Entonces yo les decía al inicio de que yo voy a estar disponible desde el fin de semana para ayudarles con cualquier duda, consulta, pregunta que puedan tener sobre la plataforma, sobre todo sobre el Midterm Exam. Y mañana vamos a, por eso avancé un poquito más rápido ahora, porque mañana vamos a dedicar al menos 15 a 20 minutos para explorar el examen de medio periodo. No lo vamos a resolver, pero sí vamos a aclarar dudas, ¿verdad? Ok. Ok, excelente. Nice to see you. Good night. Have a good rest. Good night, everybody. Be safe. Good night. Bye bye.